Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and in today's lesson, we're going to be learning the intro to a truly legendary heavy metal song, Iron Man by Black Sabbath. This timeless classic, right here. <laughs> Yes, sir, that's British metal at its heaviest and finest. Iron Man appeared on Black Sabbath's groundbreaking second album, Paranoid, which was released in 1970. Now, according to legend, the song got its name after Ozzy Osbourne heard Tony Iommi play the intro riff at a Black Sabbath rehearsal for the very first time. Ozzy immediately said, Oh, it sounds like a big iron bloke walking around. Sorry, that was a horrible Ozzy impersonation. My pal Jim Brewer does it way, way, way better than me. Mr. Osbourne, as you're indeed the Lord of Darkness, I humbly apologize, sir. Anyway... Inspired by Ozzy's Iron Bloke comment, Geezer Butler wrote the lyrics, and thus the metal legend that we all know and love as Iron Man was born. And incidentally, Black Sabbath's Iron Man has nothing whatsoever to do with this guy, Tony Stark. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. <laughs> Amusing big iron bloke backstory over, let's learn this classic power chord riff that is instantly recognizable as Iron Man. Not only is it a great riff to have in your arsenal, it will also teach you how to play a staccato chord and also teach you a couple of pretty darn cool chord sliding techniques that will help you on your guitar playing journey too. So, while this lesson is aimed at future guitar heroes of all ages, it might well prove useful to you if you're a little bit further along that road. Especially the behind the nut trick I'm going to show you at the very end of this video so you can mimic the very start of this epic opus of metal goodness. <laughs> First though, let's master the pivotal power chord riff of Iron Man. It's in the key of B minor and is played solely on the low E and A strings using just two fingers. And in case you've forgotten, this is what the riff sounds like. <laughs> Now, to make learning this riff as easy as humanly possible, we're going to break it down into two bite-sized chunks. Chunk one, and wait for it, yep, chunk two. Here's chunk one. And again, just a hair slower. Not too bad, right? Chunk one kicks off with these two power chords. B5 at the seventh fret followed by D5 at the 10th fret. And as you hopefully just saw, I'm playing the exact same two-fingered power chord shape in two different places, merely three frets apart, 7th fret to 10th fret. Now, to play the B5, I'm fretting the low E string at the 7th fret with my first finger, and the A string two frets higher at the 9th fret with my pinky. You can, of course, play this shape using your first and third fingers instead, like this. Try both, pick the fingering you prefer, and that's it. Awful pun, not intended, I promise. Anyway, after you pick the B5, to get to the D5, you simply do this. You relax your fretboard fingers, and then you slide your fingers silently up the neck to the D5 power chord shape, which, like I've said, is three frets higher on the same two strings at the 10th fret, so it's this. Got me? B5, silent slide, then D5. As I've already said, I like to call the sufficient movement between these two chord shapes a silent slide. And as just mentioned, I do it by merely relaxing my fretboard fingers and then sliding the shape up to the 10th fret from the 7th fret, and then repicking the two strings again to sound the D5 chord. So once again, this. Now, please remember this. While you are relaxing your fretboard hand, your fingers are still touching the strings, just not pressing them down on the frets anymore. I want to do this. Not this. That doesn't sound quite right, does it? I don't want to hear the slide, but I also don't want to take my fingers off the strings and make some unwanted noise that way either. Make sense? That's the way to go. Pick, silent slide, pick again. 
And at no point during that quick demonstration did my fingers leave the strings. Got it? Good, let's move on. Now, when we pick this D5 power chord after we've done our silent slide from the B5, we don't want to let it ring. We want it to be staccato. Now, what does staccato mean, do I hear you ask? Well, it basically means to play the sucker abruptly. And to achieve this, as soon as the chord sounds, we stop it ringing immediately, just like this. It's a short, sharp stab, if you will. We don't want to do this. No, sir, we don't want the D5 chord to ring. We want it, like I said, to be staccato. We want to be abrupt. That's it. Now, to ensure I don't get any unwanted string noise when I stop the D5 from ringing, I do two things at the exact same time, one with each hand. And these two things are as follows. Firstly, I relax my fretboard finger so I'm not holding the chord down anymore. This obviously stops the chord from ringing. Duh! Then, to make doubly sure I get the silence I desire at the exact same time, I also do this. I bring the heel of my picking hand palm down to mute the low E and A strings too. Pretty neat, huh? Here it is in slow motion. Relax, mute. So, it's a two-handed affair. This synchronized two-handed muting ensures that I stop the chord, stopping it abruptly with no unwanted noise. Yes, my friend, silence is golden when you're playing staccato style. To get used to doing this if you've never done it before, try doing it repeatedly on the same chord, just like this. Start slowly, and don't be too heavy-handed with your picking hand. You don't want to go... <laughs> that sucks. But it could sound good in certain songs, but not an Iron Man. We want it silent, right? So remember, build up speed slowly, and by applying the three sacred Ps, namely practice, patience, and persistence, it will become second nature in no time. I promise. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Anyway, quick staccato lesson over, back to the riff. Once we've played our D5 chord staccato style, we then hit it again before sliding the chord shape up the neck another two frets to the E5 at the 12th fret, just like this. And again, a little slower. As you hopefully just saw and heard though, this time the slide is anything but silent. No, sir. This time I'm keeping the pressure on the strings, and I'm also not picking them again to sand the E5. The slide does that for me. Here it is again. So it's pick, keep the pressure on the strings, and then slide up to the E5 so I don't have to pick it again because it sounds from the slide. Got it? Unsilent sliding. Excellent. Here it is one more time. See and hear what I mean? Two chords, one pick. Nice. Oh, and to make sure you actually stop the slide at the 12th fret, please focus on where you're sliding to, not where you're sliding from. Make sure you're looking firmly at the 12th fret before you slide. Make sense? Like this. Look. Saw my destination, got there, stopped. Then, having done this slide successfully, we then sound the E5 power chord again by picking it. So it's this. One more time, a little slower. Three chords, two picks. D5, slide up to E5, then pick E5 again. This means so far we've got this. And that concludes chunk one. Here it is one more time. Next up, is chunk two, which goes like this. And here it is again, a hair slower. Chunk two starts with our power chord shape at the 15th fret, giving us a G5 power chord, just like this. Or with the little finger. And just so you know, to get to the G5 from the E5 that concludes chunk one, we do another silent slide at the appropriate time, just like this. And once again, when doing this, please remember to focus on your destination. 
namely the 15th fret. This stated, back to chunk two. Now, once we've picked our G5 at the 15th fret, we then keep our fretboard fingers pressed down and slide back one fret to the F sharp five power chord at the 14th fret, just like this. One more time, a little slower. So, we're only picking the G5, not the F sharp five, just like we did when we went from D5 to E5 at the end of chunk one. We then do the exact same thing again, namely pick the G5, then slide back one fret to the F sharp five shape, just like this. This means that the first four chords in chunk two are these. Pretty easy, right? After that, we go back to the G5 at the 15th fret again, but this time we do a silent slide all the way back to the D5 power chord at the 10th fret, and then we pick the two low E strings again to sound it, just like this. Now, when you're using a lot of distortion to play this, which of course you should once you've mastered it, you might hear a little string noise swoosh when you do the silent slide, but it's all good. It's just the nature of the beast. Anyway, Adding this to the four chords in chunk two gives us this. And here it is again, a little slower. Cool. This means we're literally three chords away from finishing this bad boy. And as it just so happens, our final three chords are the exact same three chords we finished chunk one with, namely D5, followed by a slide up to E5, and then hit E5 again just like this. So thanks to that wonderful deja vu moment, we've now finished chunk two, which sounds like this in its entirety. And I think you know what I'm gonna say next, namely master chunk two, and then once you've done that, tag it on to the end of chunk one, and hey presto, you've nailed the Iron Man intro riff. Hurrah! And just so you know, as I've just done, after the first time through this riff, Tony slides up the neck like I just did, namely like this. And the second time through, he slides the other way, namely down towards a nut, just like this. Be warned, my friend, there are tabs and videos out there that show this riff being played on the A and D strings, like this. While that sounds really good, the way I just showed you, namely the way before that, is the way Mr. Iommi plays it. And while the chords in both versions are exactly the same, Tony's is a darker sounding way. And that's what we want. After all, my friend, it's Black Sabbath. Not light Sabbath. Yep, in my humble opinion, it's Tony's way or the highway. Oh yeah, and just so you know, B, D, E, F sharp and G are all notes in the B natural minor scale. This one right here. And if you don't know this scale yet, there's a link to a lesson below. So what are you waiting for? Go learn it. It's a heavy metal staple as your newly learned Iron Man riff so aptly proves. Want more proof of this statement? Then check out Breaking the Law by the Almighty Judas Priest or the amazing Crazy Train riff by the late great Randy Rhodes. And if you don't know how to play you through these riffs, don't fret because it just so happens that there are also links to lessons on both of those below too. Right, to close, as promised, let's learn the neat behind the nut bending trick that Tony uses at the very start of Iron Man. And I'm gonna show you three ways to do it. The easy way, the whammy bar way, and then finally, the way I'm 99.9% .9 sure Tony does it, having seen him play it live on a number of occasions and also having studied live video footage extremely closely, like a maniac in fact. Now, as I know you know, at the very start of the song, after Sabbath strummer Bill Ward does eight bass drum hits, Mr. Iommi enters the proceedings via a neat behind the nut string bending trick. Here's how to do it the easy way. <laughs> Pretty cool. 
As you probably saw, all I'm doing is bending the low E string by pressing on the string behind the nut and then slowly releasing the pressure. Tony does this a total of three times before the riff you've just learnt comes in. And just so you know, the target note for all of our behind the nut bends is F sharp, this note right here at the second fret on the low E string. <laughs> Got it? Cool. Obviously though, if your guitar has a double locking Floyd Rose Whammy system, then this is not possible. Look at that, digital magic. As we can see, locking system. So anything I do here is gonna do nothing whatsoever apart from maybe break the string, but it won't change the pitch. But as long as your bridge is floating like this one is, so you can pull the bar up as well as push it down, all is not lost because you can actually do it like this. Now, thanks to Digital Magic, I'm back with the Tony Iommi Signature SG in order to show you the way I believe Tony makes this behind the nut bend sound even more ominous. Are you ready? What Tony does is this. When doing this clever behind the nut trick, Tony is not only playing the low E string, he's actually fretting the E note at the second fret on the D string with his pinky and then plucking it at the exact same time he's doing the behind the nut bend on the low E. Just like this. <laughs> As you've just heard, by doing this clever little trick, the unbent and bent notes rub against each other as you slowly release the behind the nut bend on the low E string, adding an even more unsettling vibe to an already unsettling riff. Here it is one more time. <laughs> I like it. Now there are two ways you can pick the low E and D strings at the same time. The first time is to palm your pick and then use your thumb to pick the low E and your index finger to pluck the D like this. Got it? Thumb on low E, index finger picking up on the D. So you're just pinching the two together. The other way is this. You keep holding your pick and use your middle finger to pluck the D string like this. So it's pick on the low E string, middle finger plucking the D. This is called hybrid picking, and it's the one I prefer. That said, having watched Tony very carefully, I believe he uses his thumb and index finger to do this trickery. As always, try both, see which one you prefer, and then go that way. And there you have it, my friend, the intro to the timeless Black Sabbath classic, Iron Man, a seminal metal anthem. Incidentally, there are four other great riffs in this amazing song, and they're not too difficult to play either. So if you'd like to learn them, please let me know in the comments below. I gotta tell you, knowing the intro riff is great, but being able to play along with the whole song is even better. Have fun with this one. I know I will because, well, I am Iron Blank. Thank you so very much indeed for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, nicely please, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all of your music instrument and pro audio needs. Turn the